Okay, let's try this again. Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to B and K Bees for the first actual episode of 2018. Uh, yesterday I walked outside in the morning and let the dogs out, and it was warm, and the wind wasn't blowing the way it was, the way it had been, and I just got excited. And then I walked down here, and I can hear birds, and I can hear bees, and it just, boy, that's what I've been waiting for for what feels like three years. And then in that excited kind of frenzy, I decided to make a video. Um, spoke to the camera for probably 15 or 16 minutes. Uh, and, and went even as far as to get the, the footage back inside, edit some of it, upload it, and then realize something had happened along the way and something got corrupted. So four minutes of a 15 minute video got uploaded. I think a few of you guys saw that first four minutes. Um, and then probably we're like, well, what the heck? It just cut out. So I had to delete that and I'm down here today. It's even warmer. Um, and so I figured I'd kind of recap what I was trying to talk about yesterday, which was emergency, um, late winter feeding. I'll try to be quick on that because I think a lot of you guys have that down pat. Everybody has their own methods. Um, you know, you just have to make sure that's the only real thing that we can do for our bees right now. It's February 27th. The only thing you can make sure to do for them is to make sure they have carbohydrates, make sure they have sugar. Um, pollen is not something I worry about until I want to encourage buildup, and that won't happen until the maples start blooming and the nights are, are above freezing, um, because encouraging brood buildup, but while the nights are still falling into the 20s and teens and stuff, can kill a colony, because they will, they will do everything they can to keep that brood at a proper temperature and they will risk themselves uh, to achieve that. So I don't do any of that kind of stuff until it's, you know, we're, we're clear out of the woods. Um, I've talked about fat bodies and winter bees in the past and if you uh, prepared your bees correctly in the fall, they should still be able to dispense the amount of nutrients that they need other than carbohydrates. So we've got to figure out how to get them sugar. Um, hopefully, like I said, you, you had done all the stuff that you were supposed to do in the fall and they were set up with a, a good amount of food but bees are so variable they're they're you know each colony is different than the other one and so some of them will definitely be light at this point and so the the method that I like the most the method that is the easiest to to achieve the the method that that is uh, the least invasive and all that kind of stuff is the mountain camp or sugar brick method which is basically just dry sugar or cooked um, sugar hard sugar candy up above the frames um, but then you know they're out here flying and and using energy and not finding any so uh, I did yesterday take a bunch of partial honey frames and I scored them all up and I set them out here away from the hives so that they'll have something to do I think they're enjoying themselves so yeah that's that's partly to to have something for them to do um, and partly to put some weight on them but obviously five frames with you know 20 hives or however many are out here right now is not uh it's not going to be you know purely sufficient um but it makes me feel better and i'm sure it makes them feel better too flying around and having something to bring back to the colony um so yeah that's what i did yesterday and then i was talking about the differences in weight in some of these colonies and how excited i am that some of these colonies are exhibiting the exact things that we've been working for for many years now, um, clustering in in you know a decent sized cluster and coming through into March with still a heavy box and uh, a lot of bees and low mite loads and all that. Um, and then I talked a little bit about the the mite issue um, in that other video as well. Uh, I think some of these because we're trying to we're trying to build a, a hardy, sustainable line of bees. So. Uh, most of these bees haven't seen a treatment, and I think that caused a few of them to die, and, and I'm okay with that, because like I said, there's, there's a, a difficult path to be traveled toward any worthwhile solution, to any worthwhile goal. There are, 
there are difficulties along the way, and so we've dealt with them, and we've, and we've refined our methods, and we've gotten better, and our bees have gotten better as a result of that. So I'm excited. Um, this Mary Ellen line that I talked about a lot last year, right now is at a little more than 80%, I think, survival. Um, and they're all in single tall boxes. So, like I said, man, that's just, that's exciting. That's, that's literally exactly what we set out to achieve um, when we started this breeding program. So, I'm excited. I'm excited because it's almost March, and that's my favorite time of year. We've got golf on the way. We've got the NCAA basketball tournament, all my favorite things. And bees, my absolute favorite thing. They're flying, and they're happy, and they're healthy, and, and it's just an exciting time of year. Um, yeah, I, I was so excited, I just couldn't wait to make a video. So, and I realized that I screwed yesterday's video up. I figured I'd rectify it. <laughs> this was a mouse guard, to some extent. Or uh, an entrance reducer. My fancy equipment. Just making it easier for them to. Obviously, that's not a not a viable mouse guard. Don't don't take that as. Oh yeah, well Brett said, Brett said a stick in front of the entrance would be a good mouse guard. No, no, mice are mice are a little bit better at getting into things than that, but. Um, yeah, I, it, toward the end of fall, you know, reducing entrances to reduce the likelihood of robbing, um, or the danger of robbing if it did happen. <coughs> and I have too many bottom boards, not enough entrance reducers. So yeah, these are some Mary Ellen B's, and I'm happy as heck to see you ladies. I think this stuff was their entrance reducer. But I don't think they need it right now. Got some pieces of the sugar brick. Looks like they're doing some spring cleaning. You can see that out front. That's great. Takes away from some of the work I'll have to do in a couple weeks. Okay, so that brings me to the, nec the next point that I had wanted to talk about, which was... Um, <clears throat> If you can at this point in the year, I mean, it might be 60 degrees right now. And when that makes me want to think, oh, man, let's light up the smoker and get into these bees. But in a couple of days, in three days or so, it'll be, you know, a high of 40 or, or something like that. And I don't want to break seals if I don't have to. Um, so if I'm checking to see if they have enough food, I just lift the back up, see how heavy they are. Um, and if they do need food, it's... You know, the, you definitely have to break a seal for that one, but uh, definitely not pulling out any frames or anything like that. It's just take the uh, inner cover off, put your sugar on there, close it back up, and, and put the weight back on the lid and call them good. <clears throat> but, yeah, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to upload the entirety of this video. <clears throat> Another thing that I wanted to talk about was... Uh, one of the reasons for me not being as active throughout the winter as I had said I was going to be um, is a project I'm working on, a project that I think you guys will be excited about. Um, I guess I'm just giving you a teaser right here because I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is because it's not 100% done. Um, but that's why there was a big break in the middle of the winter for all my uh, random inspection Friday videos. That and, and it's just torturous. <laughs> I've got to edit those in the fall. I can't edit those throughout the winter next year because it's torturous while it's, you know, maybe six degrees out here with three feet of snow and I'm editing a video that happened in August. And that's, that's literally some kind of torture. Um, but yeah, so I am happy to be out here again. I hope this is the unofficial start of spring, but it's February and it's Michigan and I'm stupid for saying that. But um, I'm happy to be talking to you guys. I want you guys to let me know how your bees are doing. I want to hear all about that. Um, so what's going on with your, with your yards? Leave that in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And please get out and have some fun with your bees.